With the big boom of the slasher genre in full effects during the 1980s, it was time for Wes Craven to introduce another huge icon into the mix. In this episode of Origins, we explore the histories and lore of Freddy Krueger. After a couple of his movies bombed in the box office, Wes Craven took the next six months off to work on his next script. Based on a Los Angeles Times article of people dying in their sleep, Wes Craven now had the base storyline for his next project, which would eventually be called A Nightmare on Elm Street. After shopping the project around, nobody in Hollywood wanted to touch it, but then a minor indie company based out of New York fell in love with it. Bob Shea of New Line Cinema signed on, and with the help of other movie production companies, the movie was not ready to be made. Based on the legendary icons of Halloween and Friday the 13th, A Nightmare on Elm Street needed their own boogeyman. The name Freddy Krueger came from a bully that used to beat up on Wes Craven when he was a kid. The hat from an old drunk that used to scare the crap out of him. The idea of the signature claws actually came from watching his cat stretch his claws out. Add the burnt face, and Freddy Krueger is born. Now he has to find the right person to play Freddy. Just like the other icons, Craven was looking for the right stuntman to play Freddy, but he quickly realized that he needed an actor to play the role. With the success of the miniseries V, Robert England landed the iconic role. With the studio out of money, it was time for its release. Now to the story, which started in a small town called Springwood, Ohio. Several teenagers who are being stalked, terrorized, and killed in their dreams by a vengeful spirit of a child murderer. The Springwood slasher, Freddy Krueger. Tell you what, before Robert Angler came along with Freddy, killers was just doing their thing, killing, killing, and we thought that was enough. We was happy with the killing. Add a few smart ass lines to the mix, we having a ball. Freddy Krueger had us laughing and cringing at the same time. God bless him. God bless him. Where's your claws? I've always had a thing for claws. Awesome. On a small budget of 1.8 million, the 1984 movie hit it big, making over 25 million domestically in the movie theaters. Now let's get to the origins of Freddy Krueger. It all started with a nun named Amanda Krueger, who was accidentally locked with the criminal insane mental patients and was badly beaten and raped repeatedly. This is where the bastard child Freddy Krueger is born. Growing up, he showed signs of being a serial killer by killing a class hamster to eventually killing the children of Springwood. The news media dubbed him the Springwood Slasher. Freddy Krueger's luck finally ran out when the law came knocking. However, the stupidity of Springwood's finest got Freddy off due to the fact the police entered his home illegally. But then the townspeople took justice in their own hands when they formed the mob and burned Freddy Krueger alive. But now as a spirit, he haunts Elm Street, his old hunting grounds. A huge debate among the horror fan base, which still exists today, is Freddy Krueger a child molester? Wes Craven had originally penned him as a pedophile, but because of the current media landscape in California at the time, the studio and Craven decided to tone it down and just make him a child killer. Now in the movies, it is heavily hinted that he is one without saying the term. Now let's just base it in the real world and I just could not find one male child serial killer that wasn't sexually motivated. However, pedophiles do have a preference in genders, and in Freddy's case, he clearly killed both boys and girls, debunking that theory. It could be possible the Springwood Slasher only targeted children because they were easy kills. What about you guys? What's your opinion? Because truth be told, there is no clear answer. Diehard Freddy fans don't want to believe it, while most believe he is. Freddy would go on to fight the Dream Warriors, kill a Nancy, getting killed by his own daughter, and then having his big showdown with Jason Voorhees. A remake came and went away. The franchise as of today is in life support. Back in August 2015, it's been reported that New Line Cinema is preparing for a new reboot. Just like in the movies, right when you think Freddy's gone away, he comes back. And you know what? I'm all for it. <laughs> 